they caught me so off guard with this car. I got to be honest, man. I, I didn't. I, I totally expected it to either come in either somewhat matching the Bugatti Veyron or the Chiron with like that sort of power plant hybrid. You know, like right. a lot of manufacturers are doing now. They take what they currently have and then just go to that next level with it. They just rewrote the script, man. <laughs> Welcome back to the Two Car Guys podcast. I am John. This is Adam. And we are talking about money. I mean, Bugatti. <laughs> Either way. Probably yeah. the same. <laughs> so, I mean, car fans everywhere unite. The ultimate supercar has dropped. The ultimate, sorry, hypercar has dropped. I don't know. Are we in another category at this point? We, we are. But, I mean... So, I mean, everything about this car is next freaking level. And one of the things I really appreciate is when, you know, they were looking at the car. One of the things they said was we could have just reskinned a Rimac Nevera. Yeah. And we could have done a full electric car, but that's not what our customers wanted. That's not what, you know, Bugatti owners wanted. That's not what Bugatti fans wanted. And we wanted to kind of make it the best of both worlds, right? Yeah. And how, sh well, a couple things. How shocked were you that it was not a W16, but a V16? Dude, they caught me so off guard with this car. I got to be honest, <laughs> man. I, I didn't, I, I totally expected it to either come in either somewhat matching the Bugatti Veyron or the Chiron with like that sort of power plant hybrid, you know, like right. a lot of manufacturers are doing now. They take what they currently have and then just go to that next level with it. They just rewrote the script, man. A naturally aspirated V16. Oh man, you ruined you ruined the next part of that. What? The naturally aspirated part. Naturally aspirated? You're talking what? about a you're talking about an engine that's been a yes. W16 quad turbo. Yeah, man. Since the introduction of the Veyron, and oh all of a sudden we got a naturally aspirated. I mean, V sixteen. They pulled out all the stops, honestly. Dude, that I was mean, really they really cool. did. That's super cool. It sounds amazing. It does sound amazing. Now, obviously, the ones that everybody are looking at, the ones that we're going to show throughout the video, they're all pre-production, right? Yeah. So it's not it, it's not a hundred percent ironed out yet. But right, the attention to detail on this car is next level if you look at so they were saying that when they originally built the uh, the original bugattis right. that they didn't have a way to weld right so what they did was they riveted the pieces together and you had that seam down the middle right and the og like first off bugatti it was this seam together car that, that had its own it i mean it made its own feature that you would have never expected right uh, and, but, they, but they continued so that so cool and you had to keep that in all the cars going forward yeah they yes. continued that and, and even the windshield wiper continues yeah. that that you know blade if you Stay will going line. down the middle of the of the bugatti Dude. super cool and the then the wing is, that deploys the wing is pretty cool i, I mean i don't know anything awesome about car. the car that's not cool man <laughs> it's an awesome car i mean I, the only thing that's probably my only gripe is probably the hybrid stuff just because of the you know the the fact that in the future if you want this to be a lifelong lasting car you know that the maintenance on that is just going to kill it, but it's a Bugatti. So I guess if you got the money to buy a Bugatti, I think the maintenance, I think the maintenance question about that is kind of crazy anyway, because if you think about it, the tires on a Bugatti are specially made for the right. Bugatti and they're like thousands of dollars, right? The, right. the, the service on them is, you know, 60 grand or something crazy. Right. So I don't yeah. think that's the biggest thing I will say. I appreciate the hybrid technology in here because I really feel like it's helping to propel the hypercar forward and it, what's really cool is you've got the option to drive it in completely nat naturally aspirated mode right hybrid mode or completely electric mode right i think yeah. that's actually really cool because if you think about it even the even the p1 the 918 right. and the la ferrari they are all ev assist right, right? or hybrid assist it was the will. first of its kind it was. So that's what made it the Holy Trinity. That's what made it special, that group yep. of cars. And, I mean, yeah, it's super cool. Uh, but at the same time, I look at, like, if I was ever to have the money to buy a P1, 
Um, would I pick that car over one that is maybe like a, you know, a, I don't know, in that same price range, but just a naturally aspirated or a twin turbo car doesn't have any yes. assist. The yes, answer is yes. I would yes. pick that car. <laughs> I, I don't would know, man, because car. I don't want the battery maintenance. I don't want to have to deal with that. I don't, and a lot of people, yeah. But at that price point, I mean, honestly, you probably got the chips, right? If you will, you know, right. the correct the change. Correct change. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. you probably at that high at that price point, um, it's not that big a deal. Uh, so maybe, maybe I don't know because I just don't know. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? But but okay. So yeah. let's kind of take I a mean, step back. So right. we started off Bugatti with the new hypercars, right? The new hypercars, the first hypercar Bugatti was yeah. the Veyron. And yeah. it was kind of a test to show that they could build this million dollar price tag car yeah. and that it was something that the market wanted. With that being said, I've never been a Bugatti Veyron fan ever. You know, no, I felt, I, mean, I, I, I didn't I like, like the, the shape of it. I did like the technology. I, I never loved thought the, it was a pretty car. Thank you. Yeah. I love the whooshing of the engine. I love the the sound of the quad turbos. I like the fact that it had a W16. All yeah. that stuff is really cool. But I was never in love with the way it looked. I always thought that a, a Koenigsegg or Pagani was much yeah. more beautiful than that car. Absolutely. You know? Agreed 100%. Yeah. And I mean, there were a lot of, you know, Volkswagen, you know, uh, touches, if you will, inside that car, you know? Um, yeah. But... Now, fast forward, then the Chiron came out. The Chiron was more refined. Right. It had so more, it you know, attention to detail sort of thing. Yeah. It felt like a like a multi-million dollar car, you know? The, the best part about this brand so far to me, though, is that they took a car that really wasn't that great looking on the Bugatti Veyron. And they kind of, over time, on just the Veyron, it got better looking as time yeah. went on. Yeah, It was never, ever it got... Well, ooh, I don't like that upgrade. It was always a better look. The Super Sport, when they finished, was pretty good looking. Uh, but man, they they dropped the sledgehammer <laughs> on this car. No, and it's um, awesome. So, so yeah. for, for anybody who hasn't seen the car yet, the name of the car is the Turbion, and the Turbion is a watch term, and it is a, a a you know a part of a watch that helps expensive watches to be super super accurate. And if anybody's seen one in a watch, some of them are closed, some of them are exposed. And if you've ever seen one in a watch, it's just very, you know, interesting to to look at. And I'm, I mean, I'm a watch guy. I'm wearing my my Bell and Ross today. I, John's a watch guy, right? Oh yeah. Um, I like open, you know, open case backs, open works on watches, and I I love to see the gears and the watches move, right? Right. They took that and translate it into into this car you've got a car that's being built in what 2025 i guess it is yeah it's a multi-million dollar car i think they said the price tag is going to start in the three million dollar range oh and that God. car has all analog gauges yeah and fully exposed analog gauges so you can see the workings happening when you're driving the car, that's the that's yeah. one of the coolest things about that car. So it, it's so cool because it's it's so different. It, but it's yeah. all like relative. It's it's so different in a way that they didn't bring in a screen like everybody else does. Yeah. Because you know in 15, 20, 30 years, you're gonna look back at those screens and you're gonna be like, everything's dated. So that's kind you know? of what they were pointing out when they were reviewing the car, yeah. when they, when he was introducing the car. Now, there is a screen available, right, for backup cameras. Right. And you that do have a, a screen. Though. Yeah, exactly. You do yeah. have a screen available for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Right. And it kind of comes out of the dash, right? Yeah. But it was kind of funny because even looking at the the main pillar that goes up to this where the screen is going to be, right, yeah. it looks like it. Any other manufacturer would have made that out of plastic, maybe carbon fiber, you know, yeah. and they milled aluminum and, and it's yeah. beautiful. You know, I, I mean, they milled something diamond. Is that not uh, right? I think I, I don't know what the, you know, like I, what the milling process was that they used, yeah. but I mean, it's unbelievable. And yeah. what's crazy about that car is the attention to detail in this, in this one. Yeah feels like next level like nothing we've ever seen it's, before it, it's like the honestly to me it's like Koenigsegg and uh bugatti and um um pagani pagani thank you so much yeah. i'm losing my mind welcome car guys i'm still learning 
Um, <laughs> no. uh, but uh, but yeah, the um, the, the it's like they all had a baby, and this thing spit out, and it's a fire breathing, naturally aspirated, yeah, monster, yeah. That I just, man, if I was rich, it would be in my garage. <laughs> I mean, who <laughs> would have guessed in with all these car with all these companies, you know, moving to turbos and superchargers and yeah. that sort of thing that that we would have another naturally aspirated monster how you know? often do you hear the term that's the last one they'll ever have everything's yeah. going electric and yeah. then you know remick an electric car company right is his other company yeah the the uh bugatti ceo yeah and he comes out with the meanest naturally aspirated engine you could possibly come out with and i'm just like I mean, this dude's my hero. <laughs> well, and he said, he what? said, he said, look, we could have just taken the Remac and made it into it. and, and rebodied yeah. it as a Bugatti. Yeah. And he said, that's not what this company is about. Yeah. Right. And I was like, man, and, that's and so to be cool. fair, the Remac is one of the coolest and fastest freaking hypercars I've ever seen in my life. I mean, if you've ever, if anybody's ever watched Grand Tour in the episode with the Remac uh, Concept One, yeah. And, uh, you know, Richard Hammond driving that car. I mean, that thing just took off. Dude, that, you know? that thing can shred a set of tires in 10 minutes. Yeah. Or less. Yeah. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, just to, to see the, the performance that car has, the torque, the power, all of that. I just thought there's no way they're going to, you know, Bugatti's not going to go full electric. I mean, as a manufacturer, you think that's the direction that car would have went. Yeah, Honestly. because of, I mean, because of the relationship with Remac. Yeah, yeah, the relationship with Remac, the performance side of Remac. I mean, it showed everything could be done on the electric way with that car. Instead, they came out with a car that's naturally aspirated, yeah, lighter than the Bugatti Chiron, yeah, faster than the Bugatti Chiron. Everything was just that one step above. Yeah, and it's just like wow. And they brought hybrid technology into the car, and I'm just like, this is wild, man. Like. What, yeah. what it, world are we living in right now? Cars. It's awesome. And I think, and, oh. and, you know, in one of our future videos, we'll talk about some of the technology because, uh, Porsche is literally making yeah. some strides in hybrid technology that I yeah. think is going to change the game for everybody with the things that they're yeah. doing to maintain that Porsche soul, yeah. but be smart about how you deliver the power. And, to be honest, right, the, the folks over at Bugatti could have done two things. They could have just said, hey, we're going to reskin a Remac and yeah. we're going to make it look like a, you know, like a Bugatti. Yeah. And and it's going to be great. Have the horseshoe in the front, have the, you know, the, yeah. the, the scoops on the side yeah. and it's going to be great. They also, John, they could have taken the W16 yep. and a quad turbo and just redesigned the outside. That car is new from front Grounded. to back. Did and you see some of the technology on the suspension stuff? Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's un that's unreal, man. They're using AI to help design stress points in the suspension to lighten the suspension and using uh, 3D printing in a totally yeah. different manner to produce these products. I'm, I'm just curious, man. What 10 years from now, what are our cars going to look like? The, the ones that we can afford? Because you know this technology is going to trickle down to it. I, and and I like, hope so. I hope so. You yeah, know, they, there was a super cool man. There was a joke a while ago about um, <clears throat> like some some more modern cars. Yeah. Uh, from the folk, uh, one of the Top Gear uh, Grand Tour episodes, right. and they were saying, you know, there there was a period in time where it felt like car designers didn't want, didn't enjoy designing cars. Right. Right. If you look at some of these cars. Um, you know, there were there were a handful of GMs and Chevys oh, and Fords during that time. Rebadged. Well, it, it yeah. was that, but it was also it looks like they just took the lump of clay and put wheels on it. Yeah. You know, and then put doors on it. I mean, it yeah. they weren't exciting to look at. And one of the other things that, that uh, you know, you'll see in one of our future episodes, uh, I actually got a chance to go to a, a car museum in Arizona that unlike any other car museum that I've been to at least right. because when you paid your ticket, the very next thing the guy says to you is, Hey, when you get in these cars, please only touch the steering wheels. And if a car says doors locked, you know, that's not one you can get in, but it's a different approach. It was awesome. And yeah. you know, I've got a 12 year old son who 
wanted to jump in every car he could get in and see what it felt like to be behind the wheel of the Ferrari and be behind the wheel of the Riviera and be behind the wheel of, you know, all these other cars that we got to see some of these old Ford trucks and stuff. So that was really cool. But the thing is, there were so many cars there that were gorgeous and, and really good to look at. And that's one of my favorite parts about cars is lines and, and, you know, the beauty of the car. Um, you know, it's one of those things where, and you and I both have some, some very good looking cars to the point where if you're sitting at dinner and you're looking out, you know, you're on the patio and you're looking out your car in the parking lot, you're like, man, that's a good looking car, you know? And there's plenty of cars out there that are like that, you know? And I know I give you a hard time sometimes about, you know, the C8, but the yeah. C8's a beautiful car. I mean, it's yeah. got great lines on it. It's a very attractive car to look at. And, you know, the funny thing is, I think we're starting to see kind of an uptick in yeah. that, you know, where we're starting to see that car designers are in passionate about doing cars again. You know, exactly. so some of the cars we see, they're very exciting to look at. Even, even some of the ones that aren't, you know... I mean, I, I even know. look at like some of the cars at work. Like we got the Golf R and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, fixed I like up it. just right. I mean, it's a good looking little car, man. Yeah. I mean, and the, and the, I mean, just overall, some cars are just getting better looking, and and I love it, man. I think that's awesome. They they are for sure. And I'll tell you, yeah. um, there was somebody sent me a video the other day of, um, like I guess it was a new Prius concept dude <laughs> it's and, funny you say that and i the looked prius, at that car and i was like wow okay yeah the prius if you look at the original one it's like the ugly duckling and oh, then the terrible. new one it's it like terrible. wow uh that's a prius <laughs> right you know what i mean like that looks better than like some of the older civics and stuff i saw back in the day you know but yeah i mean yeah the, the prius has come a long way according to everybody I, i've only seen it like once or twice i haven't seen it like up close and in person um, yeah, I mean, I'm just, I, I'm, I, like I said, I, I'm happy. If you look at like the new, yeah. um, the new Tacomas, the new, uh, Chevy Colorados, like the new trucks that that just got released. Yeah, it, the whole Toyota line right now, if you look at them, seems to be like refreshed and exciting to look at. Right. But so I'm hoping that 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 technology is, you know, like you said, trickling, trickling down. down. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. I haven't been. I haven't been at this excited about a car launch in a while yeah. it came out and of nowhere too like it sure I, I guess did. i guess it was like it was like i had heard something about you know the bugattis coming blah, blah blah and i was like okay well obviously not in my price point i'll see it when i see it and then it was like the right. launch came up on youtube and i was like oh man i'm just chilling cut the launch on and and then they start talking about everything and i'm like oh my what oh, oh the incredible. craziest part the other part the steering wheel on this thing Yes, it's so yes. different, so different than than your normal steering wheel. And it's great to see a designer actually come in and and do something so vastly different than what you would expect. Yeah, but it still look good, function well. But man, that's cool. I so mean, the that last is so cool. person, the last person, the last company to like really kind of do something crazy with the steering wheel was the yoke steering wheel in the Teslas, right? Yeah, no, horrible and. Man. And well, I was not a big fan of that because there's a point I, I drove a I drove an R8 uh, back when I was shopping for cars. I drove an R8 V8, right? Yeah. And there was a point when you're like holding on to the steering wheel and you go to make a turn and you go to grab the wheel and, nothing. and there's yeah. nothing there, right? Yeah. So so that always wigged me out a little bit. But I mean, you know, I've got the yoke steering wheel on the you know on the certain, desk. I mean, certain it, things it's a though, cool like idea. In, in a sim or in a race car, you know what I mean. Like you're not going to really go full. You're like, not going double lock if yeah. you're going like that. But in a normal day to day driving, you're definitely going to hit you know that that spot where you need to grab right. and there's nothing there on right. that type of steering wheel. I, I think it's a, I think it was a thing, cool concept, but this so thing cool. is unlike anything I've ever seen before. And they yeah. were talking about having to redesign you know, really the, the gears and the mechanisms inside the steering wheel yeah. to make it do that because the gauges float in the middle yeah. and then the steering wheel kind of, you know, hovers around it, which I'll tell you, I'm six foot three. And when I sit in a, in a car, I sometimes have trouble seeing the, the gauges, gauges because yeah. of where the steering wheel is. Right. Yeah. And, and I, I think that this is, that's probably one of the coolest designs ever. Yeah. Now, the thing on it that I think is weird but it yeah. makes total sense, right? Is the paddles. Did you notice the paddles? Yeah. 
I mean, they're they're not. Uh, I mean, they're they're on the wheel, but they're inside the wheel. Well, the way that they are is they're where your hands would land. Right, but I mean, I thought it was fine. You're used to having them recessed behind the wheel, right? Right. So that you can, you know, clip the fat flappy paddles going down the road. Right. This is kind of on the wheel itself. Right. In the middle. So yes, it's where your hands would rest, but I think it I think it'd be interesting to drive it, you know. Definitely right. not criticizing it. I think it's a <laughs> yeah. really awesome concept. I like, just would, oh no, my would, biggest gripe. <laughs> yeah, I would love to I'd love to like see how that feels. Yeah. I'll tell you what, if if yeah, I mean Bugatti, cool, please, man. if you're listening, if you could license this technology to other manufacturers and Let's let go. like McLaren and Aston do the you know, do the halo steering wheel. Hey, I think that's cool. the coolest thing I've ever seen. It's so cool. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, man. Uh, that, that's and, awesome. But something else we didn't talk about, right? So think about this. Million dollar cars. What do they all have in common? Million dollar cars. They all have exciting ways to get in the car. Yeah. Like Koenigsegg has the, you know, the doors that roll forward, right? Yeah. Pagani and some of these other ones have the dihedral doors that go up just like right. McLaren and, and like the, the, um, the La Ferrari, right? Yeah. The, the 918 was one of the only cars that had just like regular doors and it was like a million yeah. dollar price point. Right. Um, but and the Bugatti Veyron did too. The Bugatti Veyron and the does and the Chiron does. Yeah, but but this, now, one. this one's got dihedral doors and yeah. oh, by the way, you can't open them up manually. You press a button and they open themselves. Oh, because what a you're, cool feature. Yeah, because you know, you're you're a multimillionaire, I guess, if you're buying that car. So at that point, your door should get out of your way. I mean, <laughs> right. uh, I'm wearing the speed tail shirt today. The speed oh, yeah. tail does that, right? You press yeah. a button and the then the doors open. Yeah. But you know, what a cool, what a cool feature. And and it's again, they could have just rebadged another car they could yep. have just taken the car taken the chiron and tweaked it a little bit you know yeah but you got to think that that's kind of their their thing right they want to come in with something so extra different yeah and they're going to come in at a price point that you're going to pay to get that and it better be good and i think that they knocked it out of the park well you got to remember there are some like ultra rare bugattis out there yeah there's the vision gt which is one of my favorite cars of all time yeah there's the uh EV 110. The, yeah the eb 110 oh, there so cool. there's also the uh was it the cento dc which is the 110 right right and then there is um the devo right right so there's there's a couple or a few the bugatti like special edition cars that yeah. are out there that are like really 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 cool but this is going to be one of their flagships like it's yep. it's the replacement for the for the chiron yep and you know as much as i like the chiron it was kind of a facelifted veron right? right it wasn't it wasn't completely new and all right. you know all kinds of crazy it was it was a facelifted Veyron, but in all the right places. The right. interior got the update. The exterior got the update. It felt more like a multi-million dollar car. Right. But I mean, this car, and I mean, this is going to sound crazy, but when they said it was going to be $3 million as a starting price, <laughs> I was kind of like, yeah. so cheap, you know, <laughs> you know, cause I, I thought it was okay. going to be in the, you know, multi-million dollars like more than five million dollars right? right the first car to hit five million dollars or something like that like as a starting yeah. price um yeah. that, that's kind of what they're known for that's what they did with the when the veyron came out at a million dollars everybody's like no one will spend a million dollars they were the first they, they were the first person they, to to have a msrp of a million bucks yep and they did yeah. it <laughs> Yeah. And and even the P1 back then was only nine some nine hundred yeah, some change. Only listen to you only. Yeah, but I mean in, in comparison to three million dollars, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> it does sound pretty good. Um yeah. but not it, you know, it's it honestly it's a really, really exciting time to be a car fan yeah. because I think that you know we've seen for so long Koenig to me, Koenigsig has always been such a beautiful car and, and it's and, an exciting car. And yeah. Pagani is a beautiful car and an exciting car. And, and, you know, when I, when I met Horatio Pagani and I got to see the Paganis in car week, I mean, they're just, they're unbelievably well thought out and, right. and every little detail is thought out. 
Absolutely. And as much as I like the Chiron, I never felt like that, right? This yeah. thing feels like it is a complete, you know, re-entry into the market. And, and they're saying, look, not only do we have the performance, right. but we've got the attention to detail and the class to back it up. And man, they knocked it out of the park. I'm I'm really excited to see like when they release the build, you know, the build your own car thing. Uh, what kind of specs come out of this thing? You know what uh, I mean? Like, yeah. we, we may have to build one out, each one of us, and then post right. it up and see right. see what get votes and see who's is better. Yeah, that might if be you fun. if you haven't been to it, go to the website, uh, play around a little bit, go through all the stuff. It it actually shows you a cutaway of the car and how the yeah. hybrid motors work. It shows you kind of the interior. I, I mean everything they did they did absolutely everything right when it comes to building this car and releasing yeah. it and and everything and it seems like they're listening too because um one of the one of the feedback that they got is that in electric mode they'd like to be able to to paddle shift shift right. through gears and they're like well there's no really need to do that in electric mode you know it's just yeah. electric motors and they said well but if you gave us the option it'd be pretty cool and so there might be an option to do that, you know. So I want I wonder if they're gonna have like like OG drive modes, like you know, that type of thing where you can like play around in, in like automatic uh like hybrid mode, I guess, or all electric mode, and you just it sounds like it's almost the gas power car and then it fires maybe. up the gas power car too, you know. I don't know. Yeah, it's maybe tiny. I will tell you that uh I know for a fact that Bugatti will be at um uh Pebble Beach this year at car right. week i their their facility or their their tent if you will uh their experience center is right outside of the welcome center for pebble beach so i know exactly where it That's is cool. i really 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 hope that they bring this car out me too at pebble beach because i want to see it in person that would be cool yeah well, okay, so more to come. We've got uh, we've got some uh, uh, discussions about the museum that I went to. We're going to talk about F1 later this week. We're right. going to talk about uh, some big news about some uh, a cyber attack that hit some car dealerships. And, and uh, really, a, a lot of uh, car dealerships use this uh, program that was attacked. So there's more to come. If you've Absolutely. made it this far through the video, thank you. Make sure you like share subscribe and come back for more we appreciate you guys thank y'all for hanging out and watching it and being here for us if it wasn't for you we wouldn't be here so That's we right. appreciate you thanks guys see ya peace